everybody this is Nicole with HelpMamaRemote.com and I would like to share with you my open bookshelf storage in my kitchen now this is a great idea if you have a small kitchen as well as if you're someone like me that loves to cook and you will like everything accessible while you're in the kitchen cooking first I'd like to share a little bit about this bookshelf my husband and I found this bookshelf at the Goodwill over a couple years ago and it was like $19.99. It was regular like a wood color and it had like a, if you look at any of my older videos you'll see it had like a little guillotine part on there and I had them cut it off. So it looks so much better without that little piece on it. Now it looks to me like somebody built this very um, durable and sturdy piece. So let me share with you how I have everything set up and tell you how it works for me. Now what I use this piece for, like I say, anything that I don't want hid away or tucked inside the cabinets so I can reach for it when I'm cooking. So let me just start from the top and share with you what I have here on the top. At the very top of the bookshelf, I have here some vintage canisters and I love vintage items. You'll see that throughout my house. So I do decorate with vintage pieces. So I have these vintage canisters here at the top along with this scale. On the next shelf here, I have canisters and I have my beans in these canisters. From the left, I keep all of my beans over here. Um, in the middle here, I have this vintage meat cutter. I don't use it. It is operable, but I don't use it. And it's also electric. So I have that there as well. And then on the other side, I have some more canisters that I house. Um, my husband loves pepper. So what he does is he, we dehydrate the pepper in the summertime and he grounds it and we store that there. As well as I have another canister there where I have extra oatmeal because I buy the oatmeal in bulk. The shelf below that, starting from the left, I have some cookbooks. I asked my grandmother for, I was looking for some recipes that she had. And she sent, um, she thought, I guess I was talking about cookbooks. So she sent me two of these cookbooks here. Another one, the KitchenAid cookbook I got from a blogger event. And another cookbook someone gave to me. Here I have this vintage food chopper and I was so excited when I found it because it also had the original paper as well as all the blades to cut with. There was an antique shop that I frequented that I would buy a lot of my vintage pieces from and they had a food chopper. I passed it up. Usually they closed and I was really upset because there were a lot of pieces that I was eyeing that I hadn't had a chance to get. Recently, I found another little thrift store, really cute little place that I love to go to because there are so many nice treasures I find there. They had this food chopper, so I picked that up and I put the original papers in plastic get tore up. I know my kids uh, look at it, throw it somewhere, or think it's garbage because it looks so old. Also, I have some can um, ball jars in the back that I house other... Um, cooking items that I use, pastas or noodles. And the small canisters in front of that are canisters I picked up from Dollar Tree. And I put different stuff in it depending on what I need it for. I'll fill it up, change the label on it. So I use them for whatever I need those for. On the far right are my um, larger ball jars. And I believe they have ball jars even larger than this. I have more beans in there, cornmeal. Um, some brown sugar in the back. I'm out of macaroni. I need to go grocery shopping. So the other one in front has usually has macaroni in it. Shelf here, I have a lot of the seasons that we grow during the summer and we dehydrate, crush them up, and I put them in these canisters. These canisters were from Target Dollar Spot and I picked them up a few years ago as well. I started off with about five to see how they would go in my spice cabinet because at that time I had my spices in another location and I wanted to see how it worked. So I went back and got more and more and more and I ended up with this collection of spice jars. I really love the spice jars. They keep everything nice and fresh. Now these are not my only spices. Spices that come from the grocery store, I keep them in a cabinet with my spices. Since these are out in the open, they look um, uniform and cute, so that's why I have them there. But all my other spices are in a spice cabinet. Then I have my mixing bowls there. Then my husband, he, I think you call it fermented, some peppers over to the far right. And um, add them to his sandwiches or a salad. 
Um, and they he did a really good job. They taste really good. They have like peppers, garlic in there. This shelf here, this is a recent update with the cast iron skillets. I originally had my cast iron skillets under my island. However, since they are heavy, I, I like to be able to reach for them with more of an ease. So I could just pick them up, carry them to the stove, you know, with no problem. And as you see, I have a decent collection. I love my cast iron. Funny story, my mother, when I first moved out, I was probably around 18, my mother gave me a couple cast iron skillets and I thought they were so ugly. <laughs> so ugly that I tossed them. I guess I thought I was above cast iron skillets. However, now as I've gotten older and cook, I see they are some of the best pieces to have in your cooking arsenal. So if you're looking for good quality skillets to cook, cast iron is the way to go. I don't like to get them pre-seasoned. I like them um, that they're not pre-seasoned and as I cook them, they get older. That's pretty much the best way. When they're seasoned, they have some kind of coating on them and they're pretty much, they're hard to work with. But most of the ones I have, we picked up from the thrift store. You know, I pick them up from the thrift store when I see a nice cast iron skillet. I have even picked up cast iron skillets that were in bad shape and I have, you know, um, brought them back to life. So I do enjoy cooking with cast iron skillets and I believe it's a great necessity that we should have when we love to cook. Over to my right, I have my La Crusade. The pot on the top, the red one on the top, I'm not quite sure um, who it's by. My husband found that at the thrift store. It was in excellent shape. Um, but the one at the bottom is the La Crusade and you know, um, La Crusade is their cast iron with the enamel very um, good quality. The bottom one, I use it in the oven. Um, the top one, I don't use it in the oven. Um, I use it pretty much on top of the stove. It's smaller and they're really heavy, very heavy, especially the one at the bottom, very heavy um, Dutch oven. So I really love those. So another quality piece to have in your kitchen are those. So um, I know Aldi carries them. I believe Walmart carries them. Like I said, the one on the top doesn't have a name on it and it works really well. The La Crusade at the bottom is also awesome. And of course that was over a hundred dollars. Um, I picked up maybe a few years ago, picked up some Paula Deen um, cookware. I thought it was beautiful and everything, but it only lasts one year. Those dishes, um, pots only last me one year. So I would never get like a, a pretty much a chef name, um, cooking dishes. I just, I just won't. I would rather invest in something more quality and it's going to last long. Why buy pots every two years when you really, you know, need something durable if you cook a lot. Bottom shelf. I have some more jars that I have some one lemon balm and that's just a recycled pickle jar. Um, we grow a lot of lemon balm. It's great tea, great relaxing when you need some sleep. So I have lemon balm, some garlic chai. We dehydrate it as well as sage. We got a lot of sage this year. Of course we use it for the holiday. My husband uses it to make our breakfast sausage. So great if you grow a garden sage is really a herb that you want to add to your list um some more canisters there and over to the right i have another a smaller this is a cast iron dutch oven and on the top i have like they're like you could do like uh muffins um they turn more round it's two of those at the top and then i have my um la crucid stock pot very bottom here i have some Corningware, the cornflower blue. I have two of those. They're good for roasting chickens. That's pretty much what I put in them. Chicken and meatloaf. The metal pot on the right of that. I picked it up from a garage sale this summer for 10 cents. I love this pot. It's great for sauces. I love cooking rice in it. It also has a the handle locks and it has a strainer on the lid. Over to the right, I have more mixing bowls. Well, the Pyrex at the top, those are Cinderella bowls. And these are mixing bowls. I use these a lot. And like I say, they're right there accessible to me when I need to get something to mix up. Like I say, mix up some meatloaf or anything. Season my chicken. I use those 
make batter, whatever I need to do. And over to the right, um, my client bought me those red lacrucids because she knew I liked them. So she bought me those. I use those for breakfast, um, dishes, dessert, um, like any kind of, um, breakfast casserole and I'm doing like individuals for our family I use those down there at the bottom okay so let me tell you how this works for me like I say I love to cook so having everything accessible when I'm cooking is awesome I don't have to go inside cabinets to get like my cast iron skillets because they are real heavy and we have to bend over and pick up these heavy pieces and you know puts a little strain on your back um, as well as, like I say, the lacrucids because they are heavy. The seasonings, because we dehydrate a lot of our seasonings, when they're available and they're out there, I can see what I need to dehydrate more of when it's gardening season, as well as they're out in the open and I know, okay, I have some Thai basil, I got parsley, and I'm going to use them because they're out in the open. Versus like my seasoning cabinet that I have other seasonings in, I pretty much go for the same seasonings all the time. <laughs> you know, so this, when they're out in the open, I'm more apt to use another season. Oh, let me try this. Let me see how much flavor this adds. So when they're out in the open, I like them like that. So since I don't have a pantry and we have a small kitchen, this is how I maximize that space. Now, one thing I've tried, I've, I've had this um, with things on it all kinds of ways, and this pretty much in the best way to me because it doesn't look cluttered when I add boxes if I have boxes of pasta boxes of cornbread you know um, cans it just looks really messy but since I have the jars pretty much everything uniform it looks neat and I don't have mind it being out in the open so if you have a small kitchen and you need more room to organize your cooking items your cooking tools this is a great way to do it. And if you don't have a pantry, it's a way to add that extra space into your kitchen that you need. So I hope you got some ideas from this. I hope you see that. First, bring those things into your kitchen that you love. I love vintage pieces and I bring them into my kitchen. Also, make sure things work functional for you. Sometimes you may try something a certain way and it doesn't work out. Switch it around, change it up, and see what works for you. Because something works for somebody else doesn't necessarily mean it'll work for you that way. So find what works for you in your kitchen so your kitchen can work functional and your family will get great meals. You'll be you'll feel more creative to get those meals out there. Cook. I mean, it just feels so much better when your kitchen space makes you feel creative, you know. Um, I don't mind recipes. I don't mind getting recipes because I write recipes for my blog. But you want to enhance your creativity. You want to be creative in your kitchen. You want to bring your family meals that you created, that have come from your heart, that have come from your mind, and have come from your creativity. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Like this video and comment down below. If you have a small kitchen, how do you maximize your space? Thanks again for watching. This is Nicole with HelpMamaRemote.com. Bye-bye.